Okay, here's our quick clinical review of the retroscapula global reset test. When we first look at the shoulder girdle, we're going to evaluate where the medial border of the scapula is bilaterally. These should ideally be somewhat parallel. You can also look at the top line of the spine of the scapula bilaterally. And we'd like these two lines to intersect on a thoracic spine lower than T2. We can also evaluate the general levelness of the acromion. However, varieties in the acromial level are quite common. We can look at the lower border of the scapula for any gapping or leaving of the scapula from the plane of the thoracic spine. That's our initial NZR2 evaluation and standing. We'll then ask the patient to perform a posterior shrug, and that's essentially asking the patient to move the scapula not only backwards, not only vertically, but in a backwards up direction, like you're doing a shrug with a weighted bar. So could you please perform that posterior shrug? Good. If we look at this from the side, you can see a certain level of adduction pinching, not a lot of vertical progression of the actual scapula. Let that rest again. Think about your whole shoulder blade moving up and backward without pinching together. There we go. A little higher, up, 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 up. Now in this position, we're going to evaluate for symmetrical ability to lift the shoulder blade up and back. We're going to stop the motion when there's just excessive pinching like this. So let this rest again. If we only go into a pinching pattern first, we may need some work on retroscapula. But our ultimate measurement here is having both superior medial borders elevated and posterior to a similar extent. Let the hands rest and perform that posterior shrug once more. In this position, we can see a more extensive elevation into the posterior shrug on the right versus the left. And I'll want to evaluate the distance between the neck and the shoulder to ensure that he's not just bringing the shoulder towards the neck in an attempt to create the posterior shrug. Let's watch that once more. Let everything rest and posterior shrug. Altogether, we have an easier coordination of the movement on the right versus the left. This can also be paired with the symptoms of levator scapula syndrome, discomfort in the posterior neck and shoulder blade area.